Welcome back. We're talking about the economic crisis in Venezuela. Let's get back to our panel. And Victor, Miguel uh, mentioned a moment ago that Venezuela has been the target of regime change for quite a long time. Now, the Organization of American States has threatened to suspend Venezuela. President Maduro has responded by calling for a demonstration against the OAS for what he called meddling and says the threat to suspend Venezuela is, in his words, an imperialist scheme to take Venezuela's oil. Has he got a point there? I think anyone, any country in the world uh, threatening regime change to another country is doing the wrong thing. Countries in today's world need to respect each other as equals and respect the other country's government in handling the domestic affairs. Apparently, over the past 10 years or so, Venezuela has struck out on a new path of growth. Whether you agree with the Venezuela way of development or disagree with that way of development, that's another question. But you do not have a right to interfere in the internal affairs of Venezuela. You do not have a right to threatening regime change. You are not a god. You cannot dictate what should be the model of the government and what should be the model of political system in another country. If you like the government in another country, for example, in this case, Venezuela, or you do not like it, you still need to treat it as an equal. You still need to give that country enough respect. That's the minimum any country, including the United States, can do, can handle itself in international affairs. In China's case, we may not agree with everything that the Venezuela government is doing politically speaking or socially or economically speaking, but we own the minimum respect. At least we need to demonstrate at least respect and the level of decency for respecting Venezuela as an equal, for respecting the people in Venezuela as our brothers and sisters. That's the minimum that China needs to do. Further, on top of that, I think, regardless of the differences in opinion about political system or political structure, we can engage in meaningful and mutually beneficial economic cooperation. Partnership is the way out in the coming years and decades in the world. It's not adversary relationship. It's not lecturing to the rest of the world and try to impose your version of the truth onto the rest of the world. Anna, what if the OAS does suspend Venezuela? What impact would that have on the country? I don't think so that, that the way would be a suspension of Venezuela. I think that the way that the com international community have to look if for to improve the condition that the opposition and the government can sit and dialogue. A, a suspension of Venezuela, of, of the organization of American states, it could be a really bad uh, signal for the region. I think a good uh, signal or initiation for dialogue is this meeting that are doing uh, since last uh, week in Santo Domingo. Um, the Latin American countries have to look for uh, to, to support a dialogue. That is, of course, an internal problem in Venezuela, and the international community have to limit it to, uh, as I said already, to the dialogue between the two parts. Right, Miguel, if we look at the situation in Venezuela right now, there is a shortage of commodities in the country. It's now exceeded 80 percent, according to the polling company Data Analysis. Uh, inflation last December topped 181 percent. How does Venezuela overcome these challenges? Well, the, the principal way to overcome these challenges is to be able to loosen the dollars. Venezuela has to make fundamental changes to its internal economic structure. It has to let float the dollar. That is, it cannot continue to have uh, three distorted uh, exchange rates. We have to understand that the products in Venezuela arrive through importation. Most of its manufacturing class depends upon the state for access to dollars. It's largely a parasitic class. That is, it's not a self-generating income producer producing elite manufacturing sector. It goes to the state, it acquires dollars at preferential rates, it imports products, it then distributes its products. What the problem has been is that there's been bottlenecks in that process, and many of the manufacturing sector has preferred to take the dollars at preferential rates and trade them on the black market rather than import products. So there are many, many bottlenecks that the government has to resolve, and the principal one is it has to actually free the, the dollar, float the currency at many different levels 
levels and begin to tackle the inflation by providing more dollars. That's number one. Two, there has to be the diversification. But again, you're going to have to utilize uh, uh, dollars earned from oil to help generate the diversification. It has to it has to target corruption. It has to facilitate that economic growth we've been talking about. But let's be clear, all that's going to happen only in the context of the oil increasing and increasing revenues for Venezuela, not through sanctions by the OAS, which are largely political theater orchestrated by Secretary Almagro, who knows he does not have the two-thirds vote of member nations to impose sanctions on Venezuela or to invoke the Charter for the Americas. So largely what we see happening with the OAS is political theater, which is added on to the larger efforts to isolate Venezuela in the region and to affect regime change. That's the larger process we see underway, because the OAS has been silent on a constitutional coup in Venezuela. Where was Mr. Almagro when Dilma Rousseff was removed, even though she was the constitutional president of Brazil? So again, we see a duplicitous nature, and we see the duplicitous role of the secretary of, uh, of, the, of the OAS, Mr. Almagro. Victor, China and Venezuela have an oil for loans deal right now. What do you believe are Venezuela's economic priorities, and how does China help Venezuela meet those goals? Well, first of all, as we mentioned again uh, in our panel discussion, the key linchpin in the Venezuela economy is everything uh, centers around oil. And oil has higher price or lower price. And oil has big, big gyration and big, big cycles. And uh, Venezuela apparently is not well prepared against a major declining oil price on a sustainable period of time. This is a very important feature of the Venezuela government. And I hope from the Chinese perspective, we see many, many opportunities in Venezuela, in agriculture, for example, in potentials for manufacturing, in terms of infrastructure, etc. People may say, now that Venezuela is running out of money, and now that Venezuela is faced and being hit by this crisis in oil price, etc., so Venezuela does not have money to pay for all these investments and infrastructure rollout in Venezuela. Actually, this position is questionable because there are other alternative ways of helping Venezuela to come up with a better infrastructure, a better way of delivering goods and services to the people at lower cost, a better way of introducing manufacturing. Even for countries like Saudi Arabia, they are talking about industrialization, they are talking about building major, major industrialized cities in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Why should Venezuela be an exception if they do not have enough money? Money to pay for all these major, major initiatives. There are other ways which can be utilized to help Venezuela to achieve this goal for the medium and longer term and uplift the economic prospect for Venezuela from the very beginning. And I would say that China will be very, very eager to be a true friend of Venezuela, to be tested in this great period of great difficulties and emerge as more strengthened friends of Venezuela with greater trust from the Venezuela government and people, and our commitment to friendship and mutual help will remain stronger. This is the time to see good friends from less good friends.